Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream Park West. Uh, I am Ron Nicoletti, and that is Pete Aiello. It is a beautiful day in South Florida. This is the Gulfstream Park West Handicapping Show, and what a difference a day makes. Yeah, we boy, I went back and watched our replay <laughs> yesterday, and uh, I actually, again, I put my foot in my mouth. I said, oh, yeah, no rain or not significant rain. Anyway, boy, was I wrong. Yeah, it rained throughout the day, and we tried. To, we had a really nice uh, race in the last race, tried to keep it on the turf, but it didn't work out. It just kept uh, Every time it looked like it was going to stop, it rained again, but uh, no such a situation this afternoon. We got, I'm not saying it. No, we got a beautiful day so far. I mean, this is what uh, people moved to Florida for, these kind of days. So uh, a Chamber of Commerce Day, and uh, we got a fast main track. The turf course is listed as firm today, Pete, and uh, we're going to go through the wagering menu real quick. We're going to start a race with the seven or more horses. We'll have the rolling super high five in it, so uh, that's usually in first number, or well, race number one today, because we have more than seven runners in there, and I believe you'll have an early pick five ticket today. I will indeed. The early pick five as always starts in race number one. It is a 50 cent play. We'll peruse my ticket momentarily. Rainbow Six with the nine race format. The Rainbow Six begins on race number four today. The old nine race format. So race number four today. And we end the day with our final pick five of the afternoon and that is the last five races on the card. It's very simple uh, to figure out that late pick five. You just count the last five races and you're in. So very simple in there. The first race today is a one-mile turf starter optional claimer. Phillies and Mass three and up, or they run for that optional claiming price of $20,000. Scratch the three. Nurse John, and uh, let's look at your ticket. Yeah, let's do that. There's a lot of speed signed on in this first race. I was looking for closers. There really aren't any, at least not significant. So I'm going to go deep in here, or not too deep in here. I'm going to go three deep. The four, Spring Spirit, first up since May for Mark Cassie. She can make ground from the back, but is she ready? She's also making her Gulfstream West debut today, so not sure about her, but she needs to be included. The number seven, Wild About Jazz. That's the horse I think is the best in here with a good running style and some course experience. And on the far outside, number 10, Regan Zadis. He moves over a spot and switches Barnes to Safi Joseph Jr. Trying to beat your top play, Ronnie. Number five, Thinking of Mom. Too deep in race number two. No singles today. We'll go Ikatiro and Wildcat Wish. A very, very tough race in race number three. I'm five deep in there. One, two, three, four, and five. Top play is a horse that's a first-time starter at 10 to 1 on the morning line. We're too deep in race four, like those two. High Dandy and Starship Apollo will close it out too deep again. Likely favorite, Gelfenstein, and on the outside, Dominate. I like Dominate to beat Gelfenstein. Have to spend some money today with no singles. It's a $60 play. If you are looking to uh, cut that ticket down, I can cut it in half for you. Single Wildcat Wish in the second. He's consistent, but he hasn't won in a while. He hasn't won in a while, but he certainly classes up nicely in there. Well, let me tell you the story about the horse that did. You did not use the number five thinking of mom. This one shipped him from mom last year and one when turning back from a mile to five furlongs. Now he's going to do the reverse this afternoon. He, he stretches out to mile after winning at five furlongs in the Jersey Shore. So he's coming back. He showed he could win uh, first off the bench when coming down here. And now he's, uh, you know, going back. I just thought that was the logical choice in there and uh, following that angle there. Eddie Pleasey Jr. just keeps winning races, so he's doing real well with his limited amount of starters thus far. So number five, thinking of mom on top of my ticket. And, and uh, the horse that you used, number seven, I did not use Wild About Jazz on my ticket. Well, Wild About Jazz, you have to pitch her last race. Uh, she got steadied back down the backstretch run and really just never got out of first gear in that particular race. She does have some course experience. She was finished third on this turf course last year. I think she rallies well off the speed here today. When she does her best work, she's well back. I was looking for somebody to pass horses that I could make a case for on form. She was the only one I could do that with, so she's right on top. Luca Panici. Luca Panici. Call. That's his uh, riding style in a number four spring spirit is dropping to this 20,000 level. First start since facing $62,000 types in the wood by turf, but it was uh, during May. And you mentioned when you were talking about your ticket, is this horse going to be ready? Mark Cassie, Tyler Gaffley, now it's a stakes place daughter of a spring at last, but coming off the bench today. Looks like she just doesn't like Canada. If you look at her three races at Gulfstream Park, they were by far the three best races of her career. She ran very, very well in all of those three races. Different turf course, different layout, and the layoff to contend with, but she is taking money, and I think she's a must use. Yeah, and the number 10 horse that we both use and the tickets uh, moved to the Safi Joseph Jr. Bond after the claim. Uh, the new connections must have rejoiced. They didn't see a uh, horse that had a scratch out yesterday defying gravity in the field as uh, she has the speed needed to, uh, you know, overcome the pitfalls associated with that outside post this afternoon. And, you know, you see a lot of speed in here. I don't know about this one winning, but certainly can be somewhere on the ticket. It's tricky here because the number one horse in this race, Storm and Charlotte, can't
can't win if she doesn't make the lead. The eight, Lady Nura, can't win if she doesn't make the lead. The nine, Pearls for Girls, can't win if she doesn't make the lead. So you do have some problems in the pace department if you're the outside horse. Number 10, Regan's Odyssey. But I think she might be tractable. That's the gamble, whether you can rate her. I think you might be able to. And uh, maybe from that outside post, they'll sort of be forced to do that, yeah. you know, and grab a stalking position. So let's go to race number two this afternoon, six and one and a half furlongs. Claim is three and up, 50000 down to $40,000. Scratch the number two horse in here, Sweetwater. You mentioned that if you wanted to cut the Pete's ticket in half, you might single a horse like five, Wildcat Wish, who's dropping to the $50,000 level and turning back to six and a half furlongs. Now, I want to go back. It's about five starts ago for this horse at this six and a half furlongs. It was back on June 4th. It was a stake race called the Big Cypress. This horse was the two horse that afternoon. And I just want to show you this horse, you know, turning from home to the wire and running there. You know, it runs really well against the awesome banner who's very, very classy. And as they turn from home, you're going to see this horse just keeps trying. This was at the six and a half furlong distance. I thought this horse at one point Pete was going to get awesome banner in this race. Awesome banner was coming off the layoff that day. And just I, I thought this was a, a, a really good effort against a classy horse. I don't see that kind of horse in here today. Well, he Wildcat Wish has one of my favorite handicapping angles, and I'm going to explain it to you now. If you look at his last race, he ran an 85 buyer while finishing fifth. That's the angle. He ran well. In fact, he ran a lot better than some of his other performances where he got beat ahead by Rich Daddy and ran an 83. He finished second or third in the Trini Berg and ran an 82. So he stakes place, but he ran a better figure last time, finishing fifth. Why do I like that angle? Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that those were some real racehorses if he could run a better figure and run worse on the, on the uh, placing side of things. And we know that because we're all set and your dreams are mine are two of the best handicap horses down here. You know, I went with the six horse in second, Pete. You have him uh, on the back of your ticket there. He's uh, debuting locally after ending his summer campaign up at Monmouth with a 50,000 optional claiming score going six furlongs. That was back on August 14th. Here is Pete's angle here. Eddie Broom, Tyler Gaffleone. Got to get a race, right? Isn't that I, true? Yep. <laughs> so yep. you backed him up. You got him on the ticket, but you couldn't put him in the second spot. Well, there is a scratch in here of Sweetwater, <laughs> yeah. so we're down to five. Yeah. I had to use, uh, I don't think Imperial yeah, yeah, Warrior yeah, yeah. has any business yeah. running on dirt going short. So that was why the, he's gotten his fourth <laughs> on my ticket. Well, let's go to race number three this afternoon. Uh, anything else in race two? No, no sir. No, okay. Race number three. Thank you for asking. <laughs> well, I didn't know. You, you looked like you wanted to say something there. <laughs> number three, race number three, not number three. Race number three, one mile on the turf, maiden claim is three and up, 35,000. Scratch the uh, uh, also eligible number 11, recalibrating. And I went with the three horse on here, and that's Zarmo. And, and I believe that Zarmo should be ready to shed the maiden tag after shipping him from Belmont Park and closing to come within three quarters of the length of winning at this level and distance over on the Ghost. Park Turf. It's a gelded son of Uncle Mo. She'd get more than enough pace needed to complement his running style in here. I think there's enough pace to set it up nicely for him. You got him in second. You went with the number five horse in on top. Pontificate. Yeah, there's a reason I went with the number three Zarmo in second. It wasn't because I didn't think he had a big chance and agree with you. And it wasn't even really because I was worried about Price. He's seven to two on the morning line. That's not a concern. I was worried about the race he came out of. The winner, Red Cat, I don't really think too much of. So <laughs> that was the reason why I didn't use Zarmo on top. I went with the first time start carries the colors of Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners, a son of Gio Ponte out of an El Prado mare that screams long on the turf. He is coming in from Ocala for trainer Jonathan Thomas. Jonathan Thomas has done some good work. He's not, uh, not starting many horses these days. Edgar Zayas gets the call. Why would Edgar Zayas ride a horse off the farm for a barn like this? I think because he's live. And you'll get a nice price on that horse and everything like that. And, you know, as you mentioned, I think 10 to 1 on the morning line, so you get Edgar at a good price. And yeah, Now the number four horse in here, Gaultier. This one is dropping to the 35 level in the first starts and setting the pace and fading to finish six. But it was a maiden special weight test going seven and a half furlongs. Wesley Ward has this son of Scat Daddy firing bullets in the morning in preparation for this assignment. This one's going to be part of the pace scenario. And uh, does he get cooked and set it up for my top pick? I think that might happen, but I think this one can hold on for a share. Well, he folded like uh, one of my suits, a cheap <laughs> suit. Uh, so we'll see. He's on my ticket. I don't want him to let him beat me on my pick five. I used him. But let's talk about a horse that is on the fringe of your ticket and is on my ticket. This horse will be a big number. Mark Cassie has two in here. He has the one and the eight. I like the one better than the eight. A son of Sydney. 
Wendy's Candy out of a tactical cat mare. This horse has been working uh, pretty steadily for a debut run. Eddie Castro has the call. Inside gate, never easy. Never easy to debate debut going two turns. But, man, the price will be good on this horse. Yeah, and it's $100,000 they paid for this uh, gelding uh, somewhere along the line. So, uh, well, could run well in there. And, that, you know, the old adage of the longer price of the uncoupled entry somehow winning in there. I closed it out with the number eight horse in here, Pete. That's a Cafe, Cafe Dynasty who's stretching out slightly to a mile. Uh, Cape Dynasty, I should say. It's hard for me to see. I took my glasses off. Returned from the four-month layup to duel for lead. Finished second against Similar. That's the other Mark Cassie. Yeah. So there you go. Second-time blinkers today, and I think that's a positive move. A lot of people like that angle. I think your dad likes second-time blinkers. Or he likes no. second-time Lasix. Say second-time second Lasix, time Lasix yeah. All right, so what? we're not in too much of an agreement today, which I like because uh, we'll see. Yeah, because you've been right and I've been wrong. <laughs> this is a really good betting race, yeah. folks. This is a really good betting race, not only for the uh, horizontal wagers, the pick four and the pick five, mm -hmm. but this is a good vertical race wager as well. Yeah. Exactly. A lot of nice also. horses in this race. So with that said, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at race number four, and that is where the Rainbow Six sequence starts. Next January, 12 horses, a million dollar buy-in for a $12 million purse. It is the world's richest race. It is the Pegasus World Cup. Welcome back. Uh, uh, really spectacular day here at Gulfstream Park West. A beautiful uh, weather. We have a fast main track, a firm turf course. If you're looking for all the amenities, you head over to Gulfstream Park where you can bet simulcasting and all that good stuff. You're going to have a lot of fun there on uh, Breeders' Cup weekend a couple of weeks from now. So uh, uh, just keep that in mind. But the racing here, a lot of fun uh, as far as the races go. You mentioned that turf race last race. That's a really good betting race. And now we got the Rainbow Six starting with over $4,000 in their pool. Let's quickly go to my my ticket and I'll show you how it looks in here and uh, uh, Starship Apollo on top of mine so we'll see how it is uh, there it is three four six two deep four four and then you'll see in race number eight how to find a single today so uh, I went with the uh, one horse in here Adagio uh, and uh, if I could go deeper I would I wanted to keep it affordable because uh, uh, $38.40 I figured in the last race two deep there Pete you can go 12 deep in there and uh, you know and it still would be hard I mean there's only 11 horses in the race but well the strongest opinion I have in the sequence is in race number seven we'll get there so I'm delighted I'm ecstatic that you did not single or even go one or two deep in there you're four deep in that race good move yeah. we're gonna you and I both are gonna beat a heavy favorite in race seven yeah I think so too I, I saw the big heavy favorite and I said no way am I singling that horse there now this a uh, fourth race six and a half furlong claim is three and up non winners of two in life 12 five scratch the five in this race uh, cyber Josh I went with Starship Apollo who's stretching out to six and a half furlongs a couple of solid efforts going three quarters of a mile uh, he was second last out then he was a trouble 30. He had to alter course a little bit. That was two starts back. Steve Dwoskin, Luca Panici in the saddle. I just thought this was a logical contender. You got him on your ticket. We got our exact flip-flop. I think he a well, horse he got to use. Always gets. To, I'm glad I'm not calling this race. Starship Apollo and Starship Apache give me fits. <laughs> if you asked me to tell you about one of their form, I would probably flip flop it. But Starship Apollo has, uh, as you said, it has experience over this course. The horse to be beat or lost to last time out, Horse Spotter Carl, is another Steve Dwoskin horse, mm. by the way. So it was a good run. The question in this race for me is, what do you do with Bocati? He's the morning line favorite. He has some form, but to me, he just doesn't want to win. Yeah, I mean, I put him on the ticket in the, in the third spot uh, myself. I, I didn't leave him off. But the horse that you put on top, I have in the second spot, is the four, and that's High Dandy, who's dropping to this 12-5 level today. Yeah, he's dropping to the 12-5 level after coming out of a pretty good race, won by Dunkirk's boy, who was a sharp victory, uh, victor that day. The cutback is not as significant here at Gulfstream Park West as it would be across town because this is a one-turn race, and he's coming out of a one-turn race. For me, a lot of times when I think of cutbacks, I'm thinking of two turns to one turn.
that's really the extreme. This is just less ground to cover. Uh, the question for High Dandy will be how close can he stay and what will he have to run at? I like him, though. This is a tough race, though. Well, you mentioned the three Bucati now in the Fernando Abreu Bond. Uh, the Gelding makes his first start. He finished in a dead heat for third with Starship Apollo going six furlongs. He was back on September 18th. MSCL Jaramillo is going to be in the saddle this afternoon. Maybe that's enough. I mean, if you like Starship Apollo, I think you got to have Bucati on the ticket, but I am totally agreeing with you. I don't know about the top of the ticket. Just somewhere on there for my exact or trifecta. He doesn't like to win, but he runs well against this level of competition. Yeah, I don't like him. That's, uh, that's just me. Uh, the number one horse, Eclipsado. I wanted to use him in a more prominent role on my ticket, but the problem was I think he's the inside speed here, which is why I wanted to use him. He's making his second start off a of fresh thing, and uh, he's making his second start over this racetrack. All angles I really like. The problem is, is he lost to Starship Apollo last time, and I couldn't figure out a reason why Starship Apollo wouldn't beat him again. Yeah, and I mean, I've used him on the ticket, uh, on the bottom half of the uh, Superfecta ticket in there. Now, race uh, number five this afternoon, and we're back on the turf. It is seven and one half furlongs. These are claim is three and up. Eight thousand dollars. Another uh, nice race here. Eight stars yeah. in here. And you know, you got to go. Uh, uh, you know, I went with the number one Gelfenstein who's a consistent son of Mr. Segaguchi. Hoping to find uh, just a tad more for the stretch run. He went up. He set the pace throughout. Just got beat in neck in his local return right here at this level and distance. And, and, and you know, would you single a horse like this? No. He always runs his race. He doesn't win all the time. But I think you got to have him on there like you did either in the first or second spot. Well, he is, yeah, and, and that's the thing. He's going to be heavily favored here. That's, yeah. that's the rub. I, I do think that he's the inside speed. I think he's the best horse. I think he's the fastest horse, so he has a lot of things going for him. However, just strictly on a value standpoint, do I want odds on on a horse like this? And here's the other thing about it, Ronnie, and I should have mentioned this when we were talking about another race, no. and you're going to know what I'm going to say, so I'm not even going to say it. I'm just going to make the motion. We had a no. lot of rain yesterday. Sometimes when the turf course has moisture in it, it still very well may be firm, but that doesn't mean there. You can't sit here and tell me there's not more or less moisture in the turf course today than there was yesterday. There's still going to be moisture on the surface, and sometimes that does play a role, especially when you're a speed horse on the grass. Cut is what the, this signal yeah. means. Cut in the ground. Cut in the ground and everything like that. So, we, uh, you know, so Dominate, you have on top of your ticket. He was fourth behind Gelfenstein. They hooked up at Gulfstream back on September 2nd. Drops a notch. He rallied to finish second in his GP finale at the 10 level. Always right there, Terry Pompey, Jesus Rios, Hanley in that rematch this afternoon between the top two. I just want to say one thing about Dominate. If you're a handicapper from out of state that is just looking at this race and you're saying, Pete, you're picking a hanging rat. He's four for 52 <laughs> in 15 seconds. No, he's not a hanger. He's had some bad luck, but he doesn't wait or hang on horses. At least he hasn't in about the last 10 months. Well, the other horse I used, Pete, was the three, Hart a Doctor, who's uh, another renewing the rivalry with this horse, the common thread in this race, who's Gelfenstein, after rallying to finish third behind him last time out. So uh, uh, trainer owner Steve Budo has uh, Luca Panici. It's a two-time winner on this course. He's run well here, four starts, two wins and a, and a third. So three for four in the money on the Gulfstream Park West turf course. I thought a horse that uh, you got to throw on there, you know, he, he, exact the trifecta, superfecta. He's got that the horse for course angle going for him. I guess so. I just, to, to me, a heart doctor always seems like the, he's best going uh, one turn, rallying from uh, off the speed at five eights. I don't know. Uh, I, I, it's one of those horses I didn't pick, but I don't have any good reason why I didn't. Well, let's go to race six. Maybe right, we can let's uh, do that. We'll figure it out. Six furlongs allowance, optional claimer, state bred. Phillies and Mares, three and up, or that optional claiming price of 12.5. Uh, blinkers on the number four horse in here. Uh, I, I did not use the, the, the morning line favorite in here top. I put him in the fourth spot. I went with the seven, and so did you miss away. I want to go back and show you this horse's performance. I thought it was so good that I wanted to go back and show you it. Did. She certainly lived up to her name, but she just drew off rather impressively. We're going to show you this in a couple of seconds when it goes on. Just seeing, I just thought it was a good performance. And horses that come out of this race, I've run well in their subsequent start. So off this angle, I just thought this was the one to beat. Glad we queued up the replay. They're always important when we're on the show to queue up the replay. I just want to drive that point home. This away uh, is our both of our top play rallied down the center of the course, as you mentioned. That move is going to have to work today because there's a lot of speed in here. First distinction, Elusive Harmony, Mama Splash, just to name a few. They're all going to be forwardly placed. Yeah, and I, I like, I just like I said, I was really enamored with that last race. And the horse I use, I believe, is 10 to 1 and 12 to 1 in the morning line. 
is the number six uh, Tormenta de Order, who's stepping up the competition. But this one rallied from off the pace to defeat ten optional claimers at the distance. She's an obvious, obvious choice, I think, unless she thinks she might uh, do the old bounce the after that hard fought score last time out. You see, she's on the fringe of my ticket because she is going to be a nice number. That was my question. Not necessarily why, but how did Tormenta de Oro rally from off the pace to get the victory on the step up in class? Nothing about that makes sense. Makes me wonder if it's not an anomaly, but at the same time, at a big price, I'm willing to maybe take a gas shot and find out. Well, tell us about Don't Tell Vanessa. Oh, yeah, I know why he wants me to tell you about Don't Tell Vanessa, because she's the one that cost me our pancake battle over the <laughs> summer when she finished fourth two starts ago behind my dear Venezuela. Listen, I'm just a fan of this horse. She's by the Green Monkey. She's 10 for 24 in the top three. She's honest. She rallies from off the speed. She is making a barn switch here today. I don't like that, which is why she's not on top, but I do like the fact that she's honest and she'll close in a race that has a lot of speed. And the number eight, what about the, uh, you know, the always angle you have to look at Ralph Nix, Tyler Gaffion, loose in ladies, debuting locally after following her 35 front running maiden victory. Comes back, stalks fade six uh, behind Miss Away last time out. I think that one maybe can rebound and run better than it did last time. I respect the connection. So I threw this one on the ticket. I just thought uh, I'm going to put a line through that one. Uh, I guess so. No thanks is all, is no. all I can say. She's eligible for non two. She's the only one time winner in here. I'll pass. Uh, just for a minor award in there. Now, race number seven this afternoon. This is the race of the day. This is the race of the day. Uh, this one, seven and one half furlongs on the turf. These are maiden claim is three and up, 12, five. Scratch the number 11, 12, and number 13. And uh, we will turn it over to you. The horse that I have on top, number six, Daddy Duke, is the horse that uh, you want to show a replay about. And I think it's not good. <laughs> not one replay, but two replays. Once, uh, one time is a, is a, what is it they say? Once is a coincidence, twice is a pattern. Let's look at the pattern here for number six, Daddy Duke. Even money on the morning line. I wanted to pick the two best incidents. This is way back in July. Daddy Duke coming over the top. How doesn't he win? He's under a full head of steam. The horse who's third, Equilibrium, they put that horse away. Uh, Equilibrium's going to battle back. How about Daddy Duke is third here? How? I'll tell you how. He didn't want to go by. Uh, that was Daddy Duke's performance on dirt. You say, well, that was on dirt, Pete. Show me a grass race. Okay, no problem. Here's Daddy Duke again over the top. He's got no hit, no run. He's got all the momentum on the outside. He had the entire stretch run to get by no hit, no run. W what is the excuse? I mean, literally, what is the excuse he's supposed to have won that race? That's not one, but two times, and I could sit here and show you every race he's ever won. He doesn't want to go by. And not only that, he doesn't want to go long. So you have a horse that's going to be an underlay that doesn't want to pass horses that's not at his best work going long. That is beat, beat, and more beat. Thank you very much. I love horse racing. <laughs> Vote for me. Boy, <laughs> boy, oh boy. I knew this was going to happen. I just didn't realize it was going to be that exciting. So the Daddy Duke, I guess, uh, as you put in your uh, notes uh, there today, has a little bit of chandelier in him, I think. So we'll see how that works out. You now, know, I just jinxed him into the winter circle. Uh, yeah, no, well, yeah, I, 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 I could taste the pancakes here. Number one. No, you, you're four deep in the pit. <laughs> you don't want a pancake. <laughs> Number one, Dividend, who you did put on top of your ticket, listed as a gelding. This is a son of Mr. Sydney, makes his first start. He dueled for the lead. He faded to finish six. It was a nine furlong, 25 maiden race at Gulfstream. He was back in March. The Concern I had with this lack of really a strong workout pattern showing, you know. So, I, I mean, it's a little guesswork there. I wish I would have seen more in the mornings, you know, uh, uh, before I put this on. I mean, class is up nicely in here, but that was my concern. Jonathan Gonzalez, excellent rider, will be in the saddle today. I mean, a logical contender. I absolutely 100% agree with what you just said. But given the fact that I will not, cannot, and should not pick Daddy Duke on top, this was the most logical winner behind him. Uh, I agree. I wish there was more works. I wish there were local works. I wish they weren't at the farm. Uh, but this horse's last race, he checked down the stretch, and this is one of those situations. He was not winning, but he was not going to be beaten six lengths while sixth either as he checked at the eighth ball. So something went amiss. He's on the tumble off the shelf. But Reed Nagel's done some very good work this year. He's batting 
shooting 23%. Not sure about this, but it has to be darn close to a career year for Reed. And what about the number two roll on tie drop into the 12-5 level? Stark, the pace faded to finish ninth in, uh, in his Gulfstream turf finale at the $20,000 level. More importantly, Kathleen O'Connell has just been tearing it up over here. And Juan Labor in the saddle, got the drop, roll on tie. I don't know what it is on the morning line, five to third choice, five to one or something like that. Uh, I think this horse, uh, just respect the connection, could be there. But a wide open affair, especially if you're in agreement with Pete that you don't think Daddy Duke is going to be a big, as you said, underlay here and, and you run well. Uh, maybe if you go deep in this race like we did. Well, here's the thing. You look at my ticket. You go, Pete, you're sitting here bashing Daddy Duke, but he's on your ticket. Yeah, he's on my ticket. He always gets a check. He's a, he's actually really an owner's dream because he's always going to get you a check. He's more than paying for himself. I'm just I'm a, a multi-leg guy. I don't like you know, third and fourth. Go ahead. I'm, but I'm looking for winners. And another potential winner is number seven, big player at a big price. He was third last time, uh, two starts ago at 52 to one. Threw a line through his last race when it was on the main track. And a speaking of a horse that I want to throw a line through his last race because. It was on the main track. Number 10, stay in cruise. These are connections that year in and year out win races at this level on turf. Juan Rizzo, Juan Jacinto Herrera has the call. This horse will be a massive price. I'm talking over 50 to 1, and I think he'll outrun his odds. Oh, there you go. So uh, very excited about the race number seven I today am. for a Pete Aiello. I thought he was going to fall off the chair there. He was uh, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, never I'm a colorful <laughs> individual, if yeah. that's what you're Let's trying to, to say. Right, yeah, that's what I was trying to find the right way Animated, to say. Animated, <laughs> colorful, yeah. Six passionate. furlongs, eighth race, maiden claim is two-year-old, 50 down to 40, scratch the six, level, scratch the 11, kit, kit, Matt. Here's where I singled. If you remember my Rainbow Six ticket with Adagio, going to break from the rail after responding to that drop in competition. Well, men's second place finish at this level and distance. Antonio Sano, Edgar Zayas, inside draw this afternoon. Uh, you look at the horses in this race. I just thought this was one to beat. Six to five on the morning line. I had to find a single somewhere. Like I said, if I could have gone deeper, I would have. But that's why I went with Adagio on top of my ticket a and changed my mind, Pete. No, I can't really because he is the best horse on paper. He is making his second start over this racetrack. Last time out, he was a two to five favorite. He had every opportunity to get by and he didn't. That's fine. I mean, who knows what how good Red Cotton is. The thing that I thought about is that when you do look at Adagio, you know he's going to be a short price. But but to your point, if you're playing the pick six, you have to find a single somewhere. And there's a lot of unknowns with the first-time starters. Of the horses that have raced, he's about 15 lengths better than them. But I went on top with a horse from the barn of Kathleen O'Connell. She's winning races in bunches. Right. The two connections that are doing better here than anybody else are Antonio Sano, who trains Adagio, and Kathleen O'Connell, who trains number three, American Cotton. Eduardo Nunez with the call. I like the way their horse aired yesterday. I figured maybe we're in for more today. Well, number five, Barry Carafin Betts is uh, debuting local in the 50,000 level after showing promise when finishing fourth behind Adagio or when they competed under maiden special weight conditions. It was at Gulfstream across down on August 28th. He's been working consistently in preparation for that rematch. So here's a horse that scares me and put him second on the ticket because uh, you didn't run bad against Adagio last time. Okay, good. You left me some meat on the bone to yeah. even talk him up even more. Yeah. Uh, he ran four lengths behind Adagio to be exact in his debut run. Can he improve four lengths? Uh, well, it's Steve Dwoskin's second time. So, <laughs> oh. yes, he's going to improve. He actually ran very well, given the circumstances. For those who don't know what in the world I'm talking about, the trainer, Steve Dwoskin, is about 0 for 7,000 the first time <laughs> exactly. out. Exactly. First time out. And then those horses get very, very, very good later on. All the Starship horses are Dwoskin trainees. So Steve races his horses into shape. So if you do see a horse like Barry Carafin Betts, who ran well in the debut, expect an even better run today, and he'll get overlooked. Talking about first-time starters, number two, Thunder Buddies, a gelded son of Adios Charlie, debuting for trainer Eddie Plisa. I'm uh, going to go back and show you a stat on Eddie Plisa over the last five years with two-year-old first-time starters under maiden claiming conditions on the dirt. He's 11 for four. 40. That's 28%, 55% in the money, $2.06 return of investment. So he's got the positive ROI. And, and this is the debut in the maiden claimers. So uh, an angle that uh, you should pay attention to in here. And I think you had him on the ticket somewhere. Else. Yeah, I did. Uh, those are the right four, I think. We right. use the same four right. on our tickets, right. I do believe. And that's because I think those are the right four. Now, race number nine this afternoon. We're going to end the day. Five furlongs on the turf. Maiden claiming Phillies, two-year-olds. We're going to scratch the 11. 12, 13, and 14.
15 in here. Uh, and uh, here's the race that, uh, you know, race number nine. I, I went with the number two in here, Arcella. Uh, it was, it, this is where I said if I could have gone deeper. This one is a turning back to five furlongs. Racing without the blinkers today after opening and then relinquishing that four, early four late lead when fading through the lane to uh, going seven and a half. But I want to show you a stat on Wesley Ward. Over the last five years, going from a route to a sprint, Maiden claim is on the turf. He's three for 11, very limited sampling because, uh, you know, it, uh, he doesn't do it as much. Uh, three for 11, 27 percent. 55% in the money with a $2.32 ROI. And I found this race really tough to figure out. So uh, I, I love the 11. The 11 didn't get in. So I moved up to the two, our seller. And that's why he's on the top of my ticket. I guess so. I, I, I can't make a case for this horse at three to one on the morning line. Literally, I just, I can't. It's not like she's turning back and it, she ran well going short. She ran terrible going short. So I, I just, I don't get it. Um, I'm uh, not attacking you. I just don't get it. I, I went with the number one horse in here. I think it's Negev. We'll, we'll le leave Chris to figure that out, and I'll work on it later. Carlos Hernandez riding the trainer. John Dowd has been doing sneaky well with his horses so far this season. Uh, this horse seems the viable alternative to some of the horses who have raced. Uh, we have first-time starters on our tickets, though, including the seven and eight we both used. Yeah, Rugarian Princess is the daughter of any given Saturday debuting for Bruno Tesori with a solid work tab showing up at Palm Meadows or gets Lasix, MCL Jaramillo in the Saturday this afternoon. Tom's Lady, you mentioned yesterday you like these patio prados on the turf. Yeah, I do. I also like Sandino Hernandez. I like to see Josie Gomez up first time out. Now, here's the thing. You're not going to have the luxury uh, of knowing when you're playing your multi-leg exotics how this race is going to be bet. But if you are tuning into the full telecast today and you're playing the eight, ninth race straight up, I have one piece of advice for you. If the eight takes money, go with it because this is the type of connections that they tip their hand in the betting windows if this horse is live you'll see it on the top yeah always good a good angle a good angle always watch those first time starters you know but it doesn't help you like you said with the rainbow six but certainly uh, when you're betting the race well uh, that is the nine race card on a beautiful friday afternoon uh, i think we did it almost in time i think we're a minute over that's pretty good for us sounds good to me no yeah, problem yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not like you have to worry about the, that track announcer at Gulfstream who stands behind you trying yeah. to hurry you up yeah right but uh, Chris is doing an excellent job, by the way. Oh, he's doing a great job. Glad to have him with us. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. What do I love about...